On top of this controversial story is the controversial coverage of it in the press. In particular, this cartoon published in the Guardian newspaper after he resigned. Many people have condemned it as anti-Semitic for depicting Richard Sharp, who is Jewish, in a stereotypical way. The Jewish author, Dave Rich, tweeted, it falls squarely into an anti-Semitic tradition of depicting Jews with outsized, grotesque features, often in conjunction with money and power. After the backlash, the Guardian newspaper deleted the cartoon, admitting it did not meet our editorial standards. Also apologizing, the cartoonist, Mr. Martin Rousen, said that through carelessness and thoughtlessness, I screwed up pretty badly. Okay, let's bring in our second panel now. And Tim Wilson is an award-winning animator and art collector. And we also have Mark Fox, who is the president of the West London Synagogue. Uh, thank you so much, both of you. Uh, Tim, can I start with you? Uh, you looked at the cartoon, as we all have, and you find it very problematic for many different reasons. Can you take us through it? Well, yes, I, I, I think um, and it certainly shows anti-Semitic tropes. Uh, and I think the chief one that I notice is the presence of the pig. It's not just the head of a pig, it's a whole pig. Now, of course, we know that David Cameron had an association with a pig, but within this context, uh, that pig clearly has has some sort of anti-Semitic um, resonance. Uh, it's, not, it's not the same pig that David Cameron encountered. And what, what I would like to do is to, is, is to draw a parallel between this cartoon and a cartoon which appeared in America about four years ago by a man called Garrison. And if you look at this one, this is so much more uh, alarming than the one by Garrison. And, Ga and the Garrison cartoon was deeply condemned as anti-Semitic. That was a cartoon which had a, which had a sort of green hand uh, owned by Rothschilds uh, that was controlling a puppet uh, a Soros pu puppet that was in turn controlling other puppets, and it's the puppetry, it's the uh, it, it's the filth, it's the pig, it's the squid, it's the um, it's it's the box. So so when Richard Sharp was uh, lost his job, was sacked or whatever, uh, yes, he might he might be leaving his office with a box, would it, but it would be a box marked with BBC, not Goldman Sachs. So automatically. It's it's questionable, and, and and I think if if the cartoonist, if Martin Rosen wanted to give the impression that Richard Sharp was uh, admired in the filth of the Johnson uh, um, regime, and and in money, uh, that 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 is one joke he could have put put across. But 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 the way it's put across, um, it's drawing on anti-Semitic stereotypes. I think it's deeply. Mm deeply offensive. Mark Fox, you also say that there are just too many uh, symbols within this cartoon, and we can see it on our screens now, uh, to have been accidental. Can you just take us through, as Tim has, has done, your observations of each symbol and what you think it might refer to? Absolutely. I mean, the, the facial features, um, Tim is a cartoonist, so I'm not, but fair enough, they're a little bit exaggerated, but that doesn't worry me. What worries me is why is there an apparently random squid in a basket? A squid isn't exactly the sort of item we normally carry around. The answer is that the squid was used very, very heavily by the Nazis and a lot of Nazi propaganda to accuse the Jews of having tentacles around the world. And there are lots and lots of cartoons you can look online in one minute of that specific anti-Semitic trope. The pig, um, Tim's already mentioned, what worried me not just about the pig, but the fact is what it's spewing out. It could have just had gold coins coming out, maybe some banknotes, but look carefully, just by the mouth, it actually has blood coming out as well. That appears to be a reference to an ancient uh, medieval anti-Semitic trope when the Jews were accused of uh, killing Christian babies and using their blood in certain uh, particular foods that the Jews ate. So there are a number of apparently random objects in this, too many of them to be and random. So th there's just a series of different images there that, you, you know, could one have accidentally got through? Maybe. It seems, you, you know, to misquote Lady Bracknell in The Importance of Being Earnest, by the time you're up to four tropes, mm. you really are a long way beyond carelessness um, and, and seem to be very firmly in the land of deliberate intent. Just to be clear, uh, Martin Rousen, the cartoonist, has apologised, saying he was in a mad rush 
to cram as much in as possible in the five or so hours available. Um, his Jewishness, meaning Richard Sharp, uh, never crossed my mind as I twisted his features according to the standard cartooning playbook. You mentioned you don't really have a problem with the features. After all, Boris Johnson is also severely uh, grotesquely caricatured as well. But he goes on to talk about the symbolism, which he says is not actually there. It's just coincidental. He goes on to say the cute squid and little Rishi were no more than that, a cartoon squid and short prime minister. It never occurred to me that some might see them as puppets of sharp. What do you think, Mark? Well, maybe one, perhaps carelessness. Maybe two, and I'm trying to be generous here, maybe two it, it is really coincidence, but four different issues, all in the same cartoon, um, frankly, that beggars belief. Tim, it just, just doesn't stack up. Tim, if you were doing the cartoon yourself, how would you have done it? Four, five, six hours, you know, how would you have done the cartoon? Uh, I would I would have focused on Boris Johnson. If I if I wanted the same joke, I would have Forrest, I would have focused on Boris to start with. And I'm wondering um, why, really, and, because it was Richard Sharp who approached Boris Johnson about the possibility uh, of getting him a loan guarantee, wasn't it? Uh, it was indeed. It, it it was indeed, and we don't know whether that loan even happened. So so so, so the whole thing is shrouded in a certain amount of mystery in in chaos. Uh, it's like talking to your accountant. After a while, your eyes glaze over and you don't know whether you're coming or you're going. Um, you know, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the amount of um, financial problems that Boris seems to have presided over himself personally in, a, in his own domestic life is staggering. Um, and everything he seems to have touched seems to have gone wrong. So from that point of view, I think, I think it's a very good joke here. Uh, maybe I would have put... Uh, Rishi on top of that heap with, with, um, with, with, with Boris, but I don't think, I, I, I don't understand what the squid represents. If it doesn't represent the tentacles of, yeah. um, of, of if it doesn't represent some sort of anti-Semitic tentacles, I don't know what it does represent. Uh, Tim, you've pointed out elsewhere that The Guardian has a bit of form uh, with these sorts of offensive cartoons, and you, you mentioned something to do with Pretty Patel. You want to just take us through that cartoon? Oh my goodness! Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, th this is a cartoon of Pretty Patel as a bull with a w with a ring on her nose. Now, I, I I'm not a fan of Pretty Patel at all. I think she started a lot of the problems uh, that Suella Braverman has continued in the uh, Home Office. But once once again, this is a um, choosing choosing to represent somebody. Uh, as a bull, I, it's it's so fundamentally racist. And and and, and to pick up what Mark was saying, uh, he talked about it. Uh, this uh, whether this was accidental. I don't think the word accident is the issue. I think it's about being casual, and casual racism or unintentional racism is the issue. And if we go back even further, uh, because again, I would I, I would suggest that the the anti-Semitic cartoons that uh, that we that, that we see in uh, magazines like the Sturmer, uh, up, uh, they're already there before that. They're already there in the 19th century, um, uh, the Berliner Vespen and bit, bits and pieces. So all of this, all of this visual imagery um, gears up to create the anti-Semitic environment that gives us the Holocaust. And, and in the same way, if we are not if, if, if we are not sensitive to um, the needs of others and to the sensibilities of others, then actually we are we, we are drumming up a popular hatred um, at, a, at a very subliminal at a very subliminal level. Pictures talk more loudly than words. Pictures go in at a much deeper level. And if we are going to use uh, racist stereotypes to get our humor, and then we're going to say, oh, well, it's just a joke. I mean, it, it, it happened to me. I, I, I got involved in a, in a story with Humza Youssef up in Scotland, and a UKIP MEP made a, made, made a, very, a, a very racist joke. I took exception to it, and uh, Nigel Farage wouldn't apologize. He said, well, it's just a joke. It may have just been a joke, but that was the problem. It's casual racism, and, oh. that, and that must be fought against. We must fight against that. Yes, let's talk about racism then, because, Mark, um, a Labour politician, Diane Abbott, said recently uh, that Jewish people can't really ex experience racism in Britain 
Uh, they experience prejudice, but not racism, because essentially they're the same as the majority of the, the white British pop population. What do you make of that? Um, the interesting thing is that David Baddiel, the famous comedian, wrote a book not very long ago called Jews Don't Count. And his argument is because Jews are tend to look whitish, shall we say, um, you know, some of them have Turkish blood in, as I do, for example, actually have Turkish blood and other things, but they basically tend to look white-ish. Therefore, everyone assumes they can't be a victim of racism in the way that someone from Africa or the Caribbean or India or whatever might be. And of course, that's absolute nonsense. All racism is, is a characterization of um, hating or disliking people on account of their attributed race rather than who or what they are as individuals or what it is they've achieved or not achieved in their lives. So it's absolute nonsense to suggest that, that Jews cannot be victims of racism. Any group, if it's characterized, or bunch of people, if they're characterized by their cultural origins, not just the color of their skin or whatever, can be victims of racism.